All right, so if you've been following my channel, you'll know or you'll recognize this. This is the desktop where, sadly, okay, this fan was bad, so I had to grease it up. I got the fan working again, but in the process of um, installing it back, so there wasn't very good lighting, I couldn't tell, but the first screw, it went in just fine over here, and then I was screwing it in, and it felt like it was going, but it was probably like going in this hole here or something and then later I tried doing I did the other screw it was fine and then when I did this you see what happened it wasn't lined up right so that happened and then I adjusted it I didn't know it actually damaged the motherboard um, so I adjusted it tried again and then you see and yeah so I offered to get the customer a replacement of the same exact board swap it out do it for free um, <laughs> but he needed it back, needed it back as soon as possible. Um, he decided to turn the situation from, uh, all sad situation to hopefully a better one. So what we, what he decided he wanted to do was upgrade everything. So this is an older board. What we ended up going with right now. So I did a bunch of research. Hopefully it's actually going to be a lot better. Here we go. We got this ROG Strix uh, X670E-I gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. And then um, we got an AMD Ryzen 9000 series processor. Um, problem with upgrading the motherboard too high, this case is very small. So there's not really too much room to add extra cooling. Can't really do anything with like liquid cooling or anything. So we're limited with what we have. So I got two different coolers. We're going to have to see whichever bigger one can fit because we got this um, ultra low profile kind of one. All right. So there's the Noctua NH-L9A-AM5. And then we have this other uh, bigger one, NH-L9-65. All right. Uh, low profile cooler, which um, I think should work okay because... Uh, I kind of measured this, and I think this is about 65 millimeters as well, so it's pretty tall. So I'm assuming the, the bigger one will work, and that um, uh, cooler is like a square, so it should have better cooler uh, cooling capability than this round one. And also this round one, as you can see, it's just this copper core in the middle, and then underneath there's the one like pipe with the copper there, and then it's just this so i'm assuming the other one will work better okay anyways let's go ahead and start working on this thing first thing we're gonna have to do is take out this gpu all right so this isn't so much quite a tutorial video as it is just showing what i'm doing okay so we're gonna undo the two screws here i believe these are holding the gpu in so let's get this out actually is it not held in there Oh, okay, it's holding this metal plate, so let's go ahead and get that out. It's been a while since I've done more than just cleaning the, um, or replacing or fixing the CPU cooler on this one, so we'll see. All right, so this has a little bracket thing that allows the GPU to mount sideways here, so we need to take this piece out. Let me see, does it have a little... So there's also this bracket down here, and... How is that being held? Because I am going to have to take this out as well. Uh, was it from the side here? Okay. So yeah, there's two screws back here. So we're going to take that out. I'm going to have to hold the GPU up while I undo this because I don't want the GPU to just fall out. So got that screw here and this screw here. I hope it's these two, and there's four screws here, but I only need to take out two. I think it's just these two. Okay, there we go. Yep, I feel it's loose. Okay, so we'll flip this back over. Get this guy over here. And this thing is small and cramped, so it's a little difficult to work with, but you can see now this is kind of wiggling. Okay. And this clip, you slide it out here. So this one doesn't have like the traditional like lever. You see it, it slides in and out. Okay, so I can now kind of push this away. There we go. And let's go ahead now and grab the GPU and lift it out. And hopefully nothing is in the way here. Okay, this is gonna be tough, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna rotate it this way, pinch this clip, and let's disconnect the power connector for it real quick. 
Okay, so there we go. All right, and now we can lift this out. So here's the GPU. All right, this is an RTX 3080 Ti. We'll set that aside. Okay, let me set it somewhere safe. And also, we have these little small fans here. We're going to swap these out to larger fans, okay? Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and pull this connector out as well. So push this latch down. And then we should be able to remove this like a regular PCI. I don't think there's screws holding it as well. Are there? I don't know. It's hard to see back here because this thing is so cramped. All right? So we should be able to lift this out but it's holding really strong geez okay i need to get a closer look here no oreo i need to move the animals give me a second all right i'm back so let's go ahead and continue taking a look so this thing i don't see anything that would be holding this down so i think it's just very hard to rip it out <laughs> let's see Okay, yeah, there we go. So I had to kind of just wiggle, 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 and there we go. So we got the PCIe adapter out. So we'll set that aside as well. Okay. I need to clean the bottom of the GPU now that I can. So it looks like I can fit thicker fans here. So I'm going to actually replace those. If I didn't mention already, we got these uh, Redux 120 millimeter Noctua NF-P12 Redux fans. These are... Much faster spinning, 1700 uh, RPM, or sorry, yeah, 1700 RPM. And the reason we got those is because the customer was saying it was like locking or freezing up and stuff. So I'm hoping that the faster, more powerful fans will keep it cooler and will prevent it from going, uh, having any issues. Okay. So let me see if I can pull the CPU cooler out because it's kind of in my way and it's being annoying. Um, but yeah okay so we got this cable here it's i think the person might have tucked stuff underneath so it's going to be a pain let me see here what is this that's not even plugged in huh no okay so this isn't plugged into anything it looks like but it's got caught under there Okay, I'm probably going to have to pull the motherboard out first. So let's go ahead and start unplugging stuff. We got this cable here. I'm going to grab and wiggle that. Oh, they zip-tied stuff so it's kind of all tight, close together. This is the HD audio. This is a fan connector here. Unplug that. Okay. Two sticks of RAM. We'll leave that alone. Okay, we got... What are these? These must be like the front case panel screws here, it looks like. So, let's see here. Is that what it is? Oh, this whole board is coming up. Okay. So, we can actually disconnect the whole board. Oh, wow. That's cool. It plugs in by two USB-C ports. So, this is for the power buttons and all that. We'll set that aside for now. Okay. Interesting how they do that. Okay. Okay. All right, what else? We got all these little connectors. They zip tied it, so it's going to be tough to kind of get this stuff out and work on it. Let's see here. Let's pull the two sticks of RAM out just so I have more room. So the RAM, it's held in with these little push latches, levers. Push that. It'll unlatch that one side, and then you can go ahead and pull this up just like that. Okay, take these two sticks of RAM out. Set that aside. Okay. There we go. We got the power connector. So there's a latch you gotta pull with your finger. And then this you gotta kinda wiggle side to side. These power motherboard cables are usually pretty difficult to pop off. You gotta kinda especially with one hand give me a second i'm gonna put you guys back on the tripod and you're probably gonna get some blocked view but it is what it is all right okay grab that guy and wiggle wiggle come on i'm trying not to take all the zip ties out but i might have to Come on, 
There we go. Okay. There we go. We got that guy out. Okay, you got the USB 3.0 connector here. All right. I know I can't get good views for you guys or good angles for you guys, but I'm doing what I can. So wiggle side to side. All right. You got the SATA connector here, which I don't know if he's even using it, but okay. This one doesn't have a clip, so that's good. Pop that guy out. I don't think this SATA connector is connected to anything. I think it goes to the front case. What is this? Oh no, this isn't SATA. Sorry, this is a USB-C <laughs> connector. Okay, that's for the front USB-C ports. All right, then we got the um, CPU power connector here. We'll get that out as well. So there's a clip on the front of this one too, or the top, so we'll push that clip and then I'll wiggle from back here if I can. Jeez, there's this cramp. It's so cramped. It makes it so difficult to do this. All right? Is that the clips? I hope. No? Are the clips on this side? No way. Wait, what? Oh, no. Okay, that is the clip. So the clip is on this side. It's just very difficult to pinch it and, and wiggle. Pinch it. Jeez. Come on. These clips are almost impossible. Is there some kind of special? Okay, let's see if we can pull the motherboard out and then that will give me more room to work on it. So there's four screws, I think. We'll take this guy out. Okay, we got the one in the bottom corner here. Sorry. I don't even know what you guys can see, but you'll just get to basically see how much time building or disassembling or whatever this thingy takes. And now you guys are in my way, so <laughs> let me see. I need to... Let's move this heat sink out of the way and the last screw up here. There we go. Okay. So now we got that out. Let's see if we can lift the motherboard up. There's probably a steel, still a few more connectors I might have missed. So let's see. We'll have to just take it slow and careful. Move these cables out of the way. Okay, and oh, okay, that's good. It's coming up. So, I'm gonna carefully lift this up. Wiggle, wiggle. I only unplugged one fan connector, so I don't know where the other one is. Maybe they merged them together. Okay, so you can see we're kind of getting this out, but there's not much room. So, okay, now we have access to the CPU fan connector, so we're just going to pull those out. So there's what this wasn't even being used. I'm confused. This wasn't even being used for anything. Okay, well, we'll get rid of that and then we'll get rid of this. And we'll get okay. So there's the CPU cooler. Okay, it has the three pins for the RGB and then the four pins for the fan. I don't know what this oh, oh okay never mind I know what this is for so the uh what you call the front of the, or the side panel it has another fan on there so that's what this cable's for so we'll reuse that <laughs> or we'll most likely be reusing that okay now if all these cables weren't in the way okay all right I'm going to kind of lift this up more, and then hopefully we can get, here we go, the CPU 8-pin uh, power connector here. So here you can see what the bottom of this looks like. 
All right, and now we have this. You can see, pinch that and kind of wiggle, and there we go. All right, so this is the CPU. It does have some SSDs in here. Um, I do need to double check with the customer. I forgot if he set it up as multiple um, SSDs. I hope it's not in RAID because if it's in RAID mode, I don't think we're going to be able to get that to work on the other motherboard. So we'll see. All right, give me a second. I'll be back. All right, so I verified that it's two separate SSDs. So let's go ahead and take this out. We switched over to a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver, and we're going to undo these screws here. Okay, so that screw and this screw. Okay, and there are thermal pads in here, so you do want to be careful pulling this up. You don't want to just yank it out because then you can rip components off the SSDs. So sometimes it helps to kind of wiggle it side to side and then kind of lift it up. And there you go. Oh, that thermal pad got ripped. So we're going to have to take that out. Okay, if you want to reuse it, just stick it back down onto this plate here. Okay, get it all lined up and just stick it back. All right, and there we go. So that should be okay. We'll set that aside. Okay, now we have access to here. We're gonna have to disconnect this because it's stacking both SSDs. So I just get my fingernail underneath and then kind of just pop it up like that. All right, you can use little pry tools if you want as well. All right, now we have the SSD. We have this little latch to unhook and then you gotta pull this up. Oh, that's stuck on there. We might have to separate all these layers, so let's go ahead and do that. There's one screw here. Okay, so take that out. And then there's another screw over here. Take that out. Let's see if we can get this thing apart. So we got that. Okay, and this is kind of lifting up. It seems stuck to something. Oh. I think it's connected down there. So you got to kind of wiggle this side to side like or like that. Okay. And yep, there we go. Okay. So here we have this connector with the SSD. We have to remove this. Um, if you can, you can actually get in there and scrape that to try and get that to release. But uh, let's see. We're going to very slowly pull on it. Okay, there we go. Oh, what are these little circles coming out? Anyways... We're going to go ahead and wiggle this and try and separate all the thermal pad. Oh, it's all tearing up here. Jeez. Okay, so here's the um, thermal pad thing that's all under here. Well, it's all shredded up now. We're not reusing these. These are for the old motherboard, so we're not transferring this over. So it's not really important we don't need this you can technically just reuse the thermal pads like this if you wanted to it's not going to cause any issues okay and let's try and get these little circle pads out here okay we'll just put them in there so if we do something with this motherboard in the future which probably not but if we do then you have all the little components here It's not lining up right. Come on. Get back in there. Okay. Good enough. All right. So we'll set this one aside. We got this SSD and um, this one. I'll test it. But yeah, this one I think is the main one. So it should be the C drive. All right. So I tested that. And yes, that's C drive. So we'll set that aside for now. Okay. Next, we'll go ahead and see about taking out the second one. So there's one more screw here we probably need to take out. So let's undo this screw. Okay, does it actually come out or is it, I think it's part of that, okay. So this one, hopefully it will come out as well. It looks like this one also has a connector but I don't know how the screws are holding that one in. So we're gonna see if we can just kind of wiggle this and get this off okay so you can see I pushed it side to side and it kind of wiggled a little so hopefully now we can release the thermal paste pad oh there we go okay oh this one also tore off but weird okay so we're gonna have to transfer this thermal pad stuff over because we don't need it on here 
and we have this other little thing that we can slide that over and then hopefully we can get this one out there's probably more thermal pads there let's see underneath they have more connectors here another fan and chassis fan and all that oh, okay I see there's another screw here and I don't know if there's any other ones but definitely one screw there so if for some reason you wanted to pull that whole thing up you'd have to do that okay let's actually peel this thermal pad off first this thermal pad looks pretty bad I don't think it can be reused but let's see scrape it off that little label that thin section is probably not going to be able to sit back down but let's see okay you can see it's coming apart or coming away just gotta slowly work at it and peel it is it gonna peel up it's not peeling up oh, it's sticking on there Okay, so there we go. Let's set that aside and let's kind of stick this back on. I don't think it will stick back on, but just lay that on there. Whatever. There's the thermal pad. All right, that's part two. We'll set that aside. Now, how do we get this? This SSD is being stubborn. The thing is you can't wiggle this side to side because this raised portion here. So you got to kind of just slowly pull on it and hopefully it will eventually separate. Oh, okay. So just slowly keep applying pressure. You can see it's slowly coming up and work your way down. You don't want to bend it from the back all the way because you don't want to bend the SSD in half. So work your way closer to the front as you lift up, and there we go. Okay, then same thing, wiggle this and pull it out. And oh, same thing, we're getting those little circles that are releasing. So let me, I guess, peel this whole thing up. <laughs> all right, let me get that all off, and then we'll be back. But basically, just peel this stuff off and set it aside. So let me do that and I'll be back, okay? See you guys in a bit. All right, we got it off the SSD. Now we just gotta throw this back on here. I don't know if we can even get it to line up completely. But there we go, good enough, all right? Good enough all right we're not reusing this so it's fine okay so it is stretched weird but it's okay all right so we're not reusing the cpu either um i don't know what the customer will want to do if they're going to want to sell it or what um let's go ahead and put this thing back on so we got these all these pieces so let's go ahead and put this back all right i hope i'm putting the right one in the right spots is it this one first? Am I missing some pieces here? We had that. We had this. Okay, I think I had to turn it. Okay, so this one has the little corner. And then this one's here. There we go. Okay, so we'll get that back in. go then we have this piece that goes back on so make sure it goes underneath that connector okay and then we got this push that back on okay we do have the two screws here that we need to put back get that screw in the other one and get this screw in there we go 
Okay, push that, make sure that's on. Not that it's necessary because we're not doing anything with it afterwards, right? Yep. All right, and then we'll get this back on as well. Okay, and we'll put this back. So if they want to sell this or do whatever with it, then they have this, they can do that. Screw that back in together. I don't know if anyone will buy it because of that. Maybe they'll feel they can fix that. Because if they can fix that, then it might be worth it. I don't know if it damaged layers underneath. Hopefully not. But the CPU should be okay. And the rest, yeah. Okay, so we'll set this aside. And let's go ahead and take a look at the new motherboard. So here's the new motherboard. We're going to have to open this up. So let's go ahead and cut this open. All right, got this. I'm gonna cut this guy open here. So I just cut it open like this. All right, open this up. And here we go, here we have the motherboard. So motherboard looks like this, okay. Let's see if we can compare the ports. This one has Okay, has all these USB ports. We'll compare it to this guy. HDMI, we got two USB, there's a fuzz on me, get off, okay. Two USB ports, you got the USB-C, USB, then you got um, another USB-C. This one has a bunch more USB-3 ports, okay or USB 2 and USB 3. So there's three extra USB 2 ports. Um, actually, no, because they separated it from here. So interesting, All right? And then you got a 2.5G. They're both 2.5G wireless. And the audio board is a separate thing that's uh, we'll have to take out and see. OK, so there's that. And this looks like this. So. The AMD one, it has this little thing that latches the piece in place. There's the M.2 heat sinks here. Okay, so it's similar. They have this little tray that you can stack them together. And then same thing, you have the two USB-C things here. Okay, so let's go ahead and peel this guy off and peel this guy off. All right. So I'll peel these out and set them aside. Okay. What else? We also have this one that's on here. We'll peel that off and set that aside. Okay, what else? Do we need to take anything else out? We have the AMD thing here. You got all the fan connector covers here. So CPU fan, we're going to have to take that one out because we'll have to use that. Wow, how does that thing hold on there so tight? Also, if you're wondering, you should ground yourself so you don't damage these components. There we go. Okay. And then what's this? AIO pump. What's the third one? Chassis fan. So we're going to need this fan connector. Come on, let go. Jeez, these rubber covers are so hard to pull off. Is there some special trick? <laughs> Especially with the grease from the <laughs> from the thermal pads on my fingers, it makes it extremely difficult. If I didn't have fingernails, it would be even harder. I don't know how anyone would pull this off normally. There we go. So you see how it's holding on just with that. Okay, what else? Because we do have more fans, are we gonna have to use the AIO pump one as a regular fan? Can we do that? Doesn't say. All right, so let's set this aside for now. Okay. 
Let's take a look in the box, see what else we got. Okay, nothing in there. Sometimes they hide stuff in these pieces, so you do want to open and check. Alright, unless you're watching my video, then you'll know. There's this random strap keychain. Okay, you got more thermal pads for M.2 SSDs. You got a USB-C to USB cable, uh, Rog Strix Hive cable. This is a SATA cable. This is the wireless antenna. Okay, and you got a, what is this for? LED, is it LED? No, it's in Spanish, what is this? Audio cable? It doesn't say. Rog, rog. I think it splits it for the audio thing. You got some zip ties. And you got another cable here. We'll have to see what all those cables are. There's so many little cables. You got some little rubber pads here. Ready to rock the gaming world. Okay. You got this thing that you can stick to the side of your computer. So this uses the USB-C port. You can see they have a specific USB port for the ROG Strix Hive. Okay, and you plug it into there. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Product overview, volume control knob, all of that. Okay. All right, so got all of that. And then the more booklets here. I'll have to look at this and then I'll be back, all right? I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so not much else here, just the instruction manual and a bunch of stickers. So we're gonna go ahead and install this thing soon. Let's go ahead and first throw this back in here and also see what's in the other two little holes, okay? All this stuff here. I don't know if we'll need the other thermal pad, but uh, just in case, we'll keep it there, okay? We got this here, which is the audio thing, okay? So it's the high audio thing, all right? And it is magnetic, so be careful if you have stuff that's sensitive to magnets. And then this says ROG FPS, what is this, card? I don't know what this FPS card. I might have to look up what this does. FPS card. Okay. So this has the two. Oh, I see. This is the. All right. This has the two USB C things, and then you plug that in, and then this allows you to have these extra ports here. So this is the front panel, and then FPS two card. Okay. I'll have to look up, but most likely this is like USB three point um, things for PCIe. That's what it looks like. They have the clear RTC to clear the BIOS and then CPU over voltage thing. So this is a jumper for the over voltage. All right. And then obviously two SATA ports. So we'll install that even if it doesn't get anything plugged into it, but we'll use it for the front panel. I'm pretty sure. So we'll at least have that. Okay. Throw that back in here. I've never seen them do that before. Use USB-C ports for um, front panel. That's interesting. Okay, I do need to check um, a few more things, but uh, I think we should be good to start assembling this. So we got this piece here, okay? And I'm pretty sure, I don't think it's gonna go backwards this way, right? I mean, it could, it could go either way. Um, if we're not going to plug stuff into the front here, then it should be okay this way. But uh, let me double check. Okay, I was right. It does go this way. So let's go ahead and click it down. So just get it all the way in. These are yeah, basically USB-C, two USB-C ports, all right? I got to be careful. Let me... But they're like super long. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so just push it down like that. You actually feel it click into place. All right. And then here you go. I was right. These are USB port things. Then this is a USB-C port just like the other one. 
you got the USB 3 here so we might have to move some stuff around because it's a little bit different I think um, let's look at the other one so here you see they have yeah so they move the ports a little bit different the USB 3 is in a different spot and yeah so we are gonna have to move some cabling around here might be a little tricky I'm probably gonna have to cut some of the um, zip ties and stuff but yeah all right give me a second and I'll be back all right let's unplug this guy and then reconnect it to the other one so let's see if I can actually just swap it like that okay because I'm pretty sure this is also the front panel thing let me actually double check I keep forgetting to check stuff all right yeah this should be the same also these are both ROG Strix um, uh, motherboards it's just this one is switching to AMD so should be pretty much the same right you got that one and then the one missing pin is closest to that side so same thing all right and we'll plug that back in here Let's see if I can do it without having to come up okay line everything back up and there we go push all of those back on to the new one and we should be good to go so we'll set this aside for now and then we will push that in afterwards okay so this one we'll put back onto the old motherboard just so they have it there okay so this is for the old motherboard push that on and yeah very simple okay so let's go ahead and continue now I will have to head out soon, so we'll probably have to continue this uh, later. But let's go ahead and first do a little bit more. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, processor onto here. So let's go ahead and grab the processor. So we have the AMD Ryzen 9. This is a 9000 series, 99, uh, 9900X. All right. So let's go ahead and open this up as well. Okay. Cut this open. Make it kind of hard to cut this stuff. There we go. Come on. Cut that. There we go. Okay, man. Come on. Okay, there we go. Alright. So now we got this guy. Pop that open. Alright. Here is the new processor. Okay. That aside so we got this guy here we go ahead and pop this open and we're gonna go ahead and carefully pull this guy out be very careful with this okay all right you can see it just has these pads so um, it's not too risky actually working with this the, the new designs of these um, processors are pretty safe all you gotta do is be careful not to drop the thing into here so we're gonna pull this out push down and then pull it to the side this go flips up and then you can go ahead and flip the whole um, cover open all right and then you gotta find these notches and see which way they line up and then just drop it in so the way you know is this side has a shorter and then this side's longer and then the two notches you see the two notches here there's also an arrow here that's supposed to help you see which side goes where and if you look at there there's an arrow there so you just line it up and then drop it in so be very careful try and drop it in as flat as possible okay so let me go like this make sure it goes in completely okay and you can test by kind of wiggling it I've had some people that clamped it down without making sure it was in the socket the right way and then they destroyed the CPU and sometimes also the pins so there you go you get that in you could technically remove this first but you can leave it on there and then you just pop it get that in and you can see it automatically pops this cover off all right so there we go so he says yeah, I don't think you need any of this information so it's a install the processor first then remove and keep the cover okay all right, so there's the CPU. 
All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and put in the uh, SSDs. So I'm assuming um, this is going to be very similar, if not the same, as the other one we just did um, because it's also an uh, Asus ROG or Asus ROG, however you want to pronounce it. I think it's supposed to actually be pronounced Asus, but people say Asus usually. Okay, so we got two SSDs. They're the same. I'm assuming it's going to be exactly the same. So we got this piece off here. You can see there's this, oh, actually they put a little bumper here instead of a thermal pad, which makes sense. You're usually not supposed to put the thermal pad on the top and the bottom. So it's kind of weird that on the other one they did that. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. So we got that SSD there. And then how does this one come out? There's another screw here. Oh, this design's different. Interesting. Okay, it looks like I have to take out these two screws and the one screw here. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. I need to... Wait, what? Oh, okay. The screw came out, so I need to make sure to keep that together. Okay, then we'll take out this screw. Okay, I think these screws... Oh, okay, they don't actually just come out. All right, so we'll take out that, and then we'll get out these two screws. The camera's in my way now, so it's hard to see. Okay, we'll take out these two screws. Okay, get those two out. There we go. Let's see if we can just pull this up. It should. There we go. Disconnect. So the connector is here. Oh, that's interesting. See, it uses, it looks almost like an M.2 SSD connector right there. Actually, is that just an M.2? I think it just converts it so it's vertical, right? Interesting. Okay, so here you can see the bottom of the other slot here. Okay, and it has the connector here. So this one also uses like kind of like a vertical thing that makes it 90 degree. Interesting. Okay, nothing underneath that. So let's go ahead and install the SSD and then we'll continue. Okay, so first we got the SSD that was in the bottom. So we got this one, we'll stick that under there. Okay, so same thing, you get the SSD. Um, hopefully you can see it goes in at an angle here. Okay, and then this drops down. Make sure this thing has a little part that rotates here. So make sure actually that it's rotated all the way. Okay, oops. It's hard to get my finger in there. Which does this one rotate the opposite way? No. Okay. It goes all the way that way. Okay. And then once you get it all the way in, you can see this thing is flat now. Then we should be able to rotate it and lock it in. Right. Jeez, my finger can't fit in there. So this shield thing. This one has a little fan here. Okay. Actually, am I doing it completely? Let's see here. So this. Rotate. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. But my hand is so... Okay, so you rotate that, then this drops down, and then you see that little hook there? So this, when you push it back over, it swings on the top and goes over the SSD to clamp it down, if I can do that. Come on. <laughs> my hand's too big. Or is it because they put that dumb rubber bumpy thing there yeah it's because they put that dumb rubber bumpy thing there so let's take that out see that they put this here and this is too big why'd they put that there am i supposed to take that out or am i supposed to maybe i it maybe they just want you to kind of force it down i guess okay so we'll get this back in sorry make sure to rotate that Okay, and then push that down all the way, and then swing that over. Why is it so hard to swing it over? Come on. Get on top of the SSD, please. There we go. I, my finger can barely reach in there, so it's making it tough. But there you go. All right, so we swung that over, and that's on top. And you can see, I don't know, they put that rubber thing there. Okay, we'll scrape off some of this thermal pad stuff here okay and then we'll put the thingy on top so this one has its own thermal pad we do have to peel this blue layer off 
Why does it look like it's dusty? Okay, anyways, we'll peel this off. There we go. Oreo, can you stop? Okay, we got this piece. So this just goes on top. So just line everything up. All right, and then click that down. Make sure it lines up, good. All right, so we got that one in. Now we'll just put these screws back. So tighten that down. I like to always twist it backwards first, if you notice. That's to make sure it threads in properly, which if I stopped when I did that on the old motherboard, when I was trying to screw in the heat sink, um, I was twisting it backwards, and I was like, well, this one, the bottom one, or one corner went in, so the other one should be lined up, right? So <laughs> I made the mistake of trying to screw it in, even though I didn't feel the click, and that's the problem. That's why it ended up getting messed up. So it's important, all right? So this is being difficult. It's hard, it's hard to do it because my screwdriver, I think, is somewhat at an angle because this piece is sticking out here. Let me see if I can show you guys closer. I'm going to hold the camera so I can actually move closer because right now to record, I'm like sitting with my head far away. Okay, you can see here. All right, so here you can see the screw hole. And it should just go in. Oh, there we go. I think, is it going in? No. Why isn't it lining up right? Everything's lined up. You see that? I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Let's try putting the other one first. Venus, move out of the way. Okay, let me put you guys back on the tripod. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and see. I don't know why the screw isn't going in. Let's see. This guy back in. Is it because it's going at a weird angle since my screwdriver's tilted? Probably. Yeah, it's not going back in. Let's pull this back out, or at least let's undo this screw a little bit. Sorry, I don't know what you're seeing. We'll undo this screw a little, and maybe that will allow this to move a tiny bit, and then we can get it lined up right. I don't know why. Yeah, it's not going in for some reason. I guess let's take this out and then let's see if I can, what is going on? I hope I'm not destroying it like I did with the other thing. Okay, let's wiggle this. Now there's a thermal pad kind of holding it in place, so it's gonna be hard to lift. There we go, you can see it kind of smushed into place a little. Why is this not going in? It's just going into these little screw holes. See, that goes in just fine. What in the world? Okay, let's get this back in again. Okay, line that up. Click that in. Okay, let me try and not do these first. I didn't screw that one in yet. And let's try and get these in first. I'm assuming it's because my screwdriver is hitting the thing here. Okay, now it's actually going in, so... There we go. I don't know what changed there. Okay, yeah, now the screws are going in. I don't know what changed. That was really weird. But there we go. Tighten that guy in. And tighten that guy in. Then we'll tighten this guy down. Okay, there we go. All right, then we'll get the other SSD. Same thing. Get this in. All right, make sure this is switched over here. Oops, too much. And then push that down and swing that over. It needs some like extra pushing down for some reason. Jeez, why isn't it? This is weird. I think that rubber pad is a little bit too thick, so it makes it to where you have to push this down extra strong. And Come on, swing over. Is it, see, it's like hitting this a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we got that in, swing that over. Perfect, let's go ahead and get this piece back on. 
make sure you put it the right way. Okay, so this lines up here, over here. And we'll tighten this in. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead now and put the next component in. <clears throat> We're going to put in the RAM. So we have this. Uh, T-Force Delta DDR5 gaming desktop RAM, 32 gigs, 8,000 megahertz, all right? Lifetime warranty. Let's go ahead and cut this open. Okay, interesting. They plastic wrap it, and they put a little tab of tape on there. So, <clears throat> here we go. Let's go ahead and cut this thing open. And hopefully we'll be able to get all the connectors in. So we got that. Let's go ahead and cut this guy open here. Okay, we'll get this. And get this. And get this. Okay, then we'll get this. Here you have the two sticks of RAM. All right, there's a sticker there. We don't want that going in. So let's go ahead and pop this open. Okay. Now let's go ahead and rotate this so it's easier to kind of see. All right. <clears throat> sticker ram, kind of just hold the thing and then pull this plastic back. All right, you do want to check which side the RAM goes because it's a little bit hard to see. This side, I think, is, is that the one? A little bit shorter, yeah. So that side's a little shorter, so get this slotted in. And then make sure that the line matches up, right, with the center. I'm going to push from both sides with my fingers underneath to help, and then we'll click it down. You don't have to do both at the same time. You can do one side and then the other, as you saw. Okay, that's usually how I'll pop it in. So you get, again, get this one, line it up, make sure it's lined up, and then click, click, okay? And make sure both sides click because a lot of times I get customers that bring their computer in and this side, because it doesn't have that latch that moves inwards, they don't realize that they're not clicking it in all the way. Okay, so that's important. You wanna make sure that clicks in all the way. All right, next thing, so we got the RAM. Let's go ahead and put that back in the box. So we don't need that anymore. Okay, so we got the processor that. Now we gotta get the cooler in. So I do need to verify the cooler is gonna fit without everything else hitting it. So let's go ahead and open the box up and take a look. Okay, we got this, we'll move this to the side. We're gonna pull this open and then open this up. Open this up, so here you go. We have all the mounting materials here, okay? So it comes with the thermal paste, it comes with the screwdriver, um, it comes with the low noise adapter. I'm not gonna use that because it's better to have it run faster and cool faster. It has in, uh, AMD mounting brackets and yeah. So let's go ahead and open this box up try and be careful because I don't want to tear up the box but here we go so here you go these are the AMD parts here I'm wondering this is CPU okay let's see because these two parts look different so and then you got the Intel parts here we got the thermal paste we're not going to use the noise adapter, and I think it comes with a sticker. Usually, yeah, like one of those stickers. Okay, so we'll set this aside. 
we also need to take a look at the heat sink here so it comes up just like this and I'm pretty sure this heat sink is lower <laughs> lower than the original one so here's the heat sink and look at the original one so it's definitely shorter than the original one not by much but it is shorter okay so this will definitely fit we should be okay with that um, the fan the fan propellers are more narrow but as you can see there's a lot more of them and usually Noctua fans are really good also there's a lot more surface area with these thinner uh, fins and more heat piping for better heat dissipation or heat not dissipation but it pulls the heat in better and then these fins help dissipate the heat a lot better okay so we should be good with that we just need to make sure we can mount it properly into here this is an uh, AMD AM5 socket I believe so let's double check that we can install this and we should be good to go so AMD go I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to remove this these socket pieces that's usually what ends up happening okay and yeah so here you go so AMD AM5 AM4 we're gonna have to replace this so you need AMD stock back plate so that comes with the computer and then you have these two pieces the mounting bar all right so you have the north and the CPU and the south all right so let me set this up and we'll see Venus move over what are you doing come here no 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 go okay so we got this we'll have to take a look and then we'll have to line this up right and we should be good to go so here you can see how it lines up so yeah let's go ahead and take the old stuff out and then mount it and we should be good here you can see how it says to do the pace for the am5 okay so you put some dots there and then one in the middle normally i just do a big one in the middle and it spreads out but i guess then you won't get these little corner edges so they do that all right so let me do that real quick read this and i'll be back all right i'm back let's go ahead and install this thing so first we need to remove the built-in one okay so i'm gonna have to switch over to the uh, ph2 screwdriver so i have a larger one you could probably use the uh, one that came with the thing as well so these screws are really tight okay go ahead and remove these Jeez, these screws are really tight. Okay, two, three, and the last one here, four. Okay, we are going to have to also replace the fans that are in there. Okay, so we got those four out. We're going to take these pieces and set them aside. I'd recommend saving these just in case. Most people throw them away and they're like, whatever if I need them then uh, I can always like find another or replace whatever so I don't know I don't I, I always think it's good to save it um, for me I have too many computer stuff because they're all customers things so for me if I save this stuff I end up with way too much stuff which I have way too much stuff so yeah but if, if it's like you and you just have one computer you're not building a million computers then I mean why not but also if you work on computers then if you have a good way to organize these why not save these parts somebody will need them or try and sell them or something I don't know anyways here you go we got these four plastic things we got to first get these onto the mounting posts here so get behind this make sure you hold the original mounting plate into place and we're just gonna put these onto there okay so you get those just line them up there interesting LGA 1718 why does it say LGA it's is that a socket I thought it's AM5 is the socket type I don't know you can see right here it says AM5 so it says AMD Ryzen here so according to the directions you want this to go over here and then this one to go down here so let me set this down real quick and then let's see because there's two different spots here you see that so they tell you standard position no offset and then if you want um i guess you can make it offset i don't know why <laughs> what okay so 
Let me check this real quick. I'll be back. All right, so it says to use for AM5 the offset. So we're going to use the 7 millimeter offset, which is the further one there. And then we got this one, which the CPU, you want to make sure it shows pointing to the CPU. Okay, and there's the south one. Normally, you'd have the board rotated that way. So we got to use the 7 millimeter offset here. Okay, so we'll put the screw in like this and like this so these these are the seven millimeter offset holes and i'm going to hold this up here and then we're going to try and get this in make sure it lines up and goes in right okay and i'll loosely twist it backwards first there we go and then we'll slowly tighten it down there we go okay and you don't want to tighten these really hard once it's like kind of just not really twisting that should be okay all right so just like that okay once it's not really twisting that's good all right it tells you on here the amount of torque uh, max 0.6 nanometers of torque okay so yeah you're not twisting it very hard you don't want to uh, tighten this down too strong um, either way the the thing is going to pull on this so it's not like using these mounting holes as a way to um, pull the heat sink down okay so don't over tighten that all right so now we're gonna get that guy in and then we're gonna get this guy in there we go okay again just tighten it till it kind of stops and there we go all right i need to double check the fan headers because we need more there's only two here so let me check some stuff real quick and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. My only worry is there's only um, the CPU fan header and then the regular fan and then they have the AIO pump. But uh, I don't know, unless we use the AIO pump for the another fan, um, there's not enough fan ports. We have, we're gonna have three fans in this case plus the CPU cooler. So that's four total. I don't remember how the previous one did they have a splitter here because pretty sure this only had okay so the old one here has the cpu this is the aio pump okay they did use the aio pump as one of the regular fans and then it has um a third one down here which is the chassis fan see that's only three right so this one also only had three they just put them in different places so I guess we'll have to pull this rubber piece off and use that one. Okay. So, come on. Why do they put these here? Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay. So, we got that. Okay. Definitely the CPU fan will fit okay. Um, it looks like if we put it, it's going to have to sit like this. So, we're going to have some of this um, cabling that's not very pretty all right if I were to put it this way so first we take this fan off right so pull this down and then it swings out same thing over here pull this down and it swings out and then we can take this out the problem is oh actually just kidding <laughs> I can take these off I forgot about that and then we should be able to do that so that should be okay we can readjust these you do want the fan blowing down into the heat sink so make sure you don't flip it around the way you know the direction the fans blowing you see these um, kind of support things that's the direction the fan always blows in okay so this is much nicer there's no way you can accidentally screw into the motherboard because you're going straight on top of this okay so you won't have any issues with that and it looks like it's the same both ways, except you have the Noctua logo here. So I guess if you want to see the Noctua logo, then you would have it facing the RAM. Um, it doesn't really matter if you face it the other way if you don't want to really see the branding on it as much because it will be blocked by this piece. What is this? Why is that there? Let me, let me take a look. <laughs> okay, so that's rubber. This is like a rubbery flap that's kind of weird because it's not really straight is it just part of this I think it's just part of this flap but it's weird because it's like crooked here can I push that in eh, it kind of lined up a little bit better 
yeah, I don't know. That's kind of weird. Whatever. This little flap is just here. Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and do the thermal paste. So we can go ahead and zoom in here. I wonder if I should do this part first. I still have to... Eh, yeah, we'll do this first. Okay. Because it'll be much easier to mount the cooler um, like this. All right. Actually, it doesn't really matter. This one you can do outside as well. Uh, let's see. Should I wait? Uh, yeah, we can put it now. Okay. So we put a dot in the middle. Just like this. Okay. That's actually quite a lot. We do not need that much. All right. And then it says like a dot here. And a dot here, and a dot here. That's a lot, and a dot here. That's quite a bit that I put there, so. All right, there you go. So we got the thermal paste. Here you can see, right? It says like that. Five dots, uh, four small dots, two millimeter diameter. That's way too giant. <laughs> I'm going to have to try and pull some of the paste back in because it's going to... Um, and then the big one, three to four millimeters. Yeah, I put way too much paste. So let's try and pull some of that back in. I don't know if I'll be able to, but... Uh-oh, this is not going to be good, <laughs> I don't think. Kind of. You don't want too much paste. It's not good for the thing. Okay. So let's see if we can kind of try and spread this a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to flow. If you have too much paste, what happens is it will kind of all just flow over into the outer side and then it's going to hold the paste into areas that don't need pa uh, heat that can't dissipate into the heat sink so do you need to put a little bit back there oh, oh too much okay and we should be good okay all right, so we got that in. All right, that should be plenty thermal paste. What did I do with the lid here? There we go. Okay, so let me show you here. Okay, there you go. Tried to make it into little dots, but it's a little bit tricky with that little syringe. They need a little thing that makes it easier to shape this. It's also hard to do because the camera's in my way. <laughs> All right. But anyways, you get the idea. All right, let me make sure we get a good amount. Okay, I need to take a closer look to make sure it's good. That should be okay. Once we smush it down, it'll and then it'll flatten over the entire thing. Okay. So we're going to take this, make sure obviously you remove that, okay? And if you're using a different kind, if there's a peeling sticker, make sure you peel that off, all right? Let's go ahead and get this lined up. Line up that and that. And we have this screwdriver now. Now twist this. I like to make sure you hear it twist it and hear it click. Okay, one, two, three. We're going to go with this side. See, it's not lining up right. So come on. Wow, this is hard because the spring is pulling it up. Let me actually loosen this so it's not as tight. And let's see if we can get this to go in now. There we go. Okay. And now both sides are good. So we'll go back here 
and then we'll one, two, three. Oops, am I zoomed in way too much? Sorry. And then one, two, three. Back over here. One, two, three. And back over here. One, two, three. Okay. I like to try and evenly tighten it. Okay, and then once you tighten it down, it should be pretty much it's, it'll um, push the pressure on its own because it has the spring in there and the springs will just constantly be pulling the uh, cooler onto it. All right, so you can see what it looks like. It actually looks, as you can see, it's further over to one side than the other, but that's just the design. Okay, all right. We should be good. Let's go ahead now and get the fan on. So we have the fan here. Again, you want it pointing down. And we want this to be plugged into the CPU thing there. And it looks like we might have to actually make it go this direction. Or we can route it this way and turn the fan the other way, right? There we go. That way we can hide more of the fan over there. Okay. So we need these metal things back and they just go over the top like this. Okay. Get that, pull that down. Okay. Make sure that the fan is centered. All right. And we'll do the same thing with this side. Oh, I might have to pull the thing out here. So we're going to get this underneath because the cable is over there so I'm gonna get this over here Venus don't climb on me I'm working no don't go over there <laughs> Jeez. all right so we'll get this into there and this into there okay and again try and center it click that in center this and click that in all right so now we got the CPU fan in there centered Venus move over okay so we'll take a look here and it's actually more onto the other side so let's move it over a little okay make sure it's centered good and check the other side make sure that's somewhat centered <laughs> we'll move it down a little one more here okay Look at this side. There we go. All right, and there we go. So we got that in, CPU in. All right, let's go ahead now and move this aside for now because we need to work with the installing the fans. Okay, so we got the three fans here. We'll throw the extra stuff that we finished working on back in the other box. Okay, we have the low noise adapters. Again, we're not using those, so we'll set those aside. Okay, so there's that stuff. Put that back in. All right, I need to grab all this stuff together so I can give it to my customer once we're done. Finish that one. Finish the RAM. Okay, finish the... CPU stuff. Give me a second. I'll clean up this and I'll be back. All right, let's go ahead and install the fans. Luckily, I had one of these splitters because this one I didn't realize uses a different kind of like it has the normal connector on here, but on the other end it uses some weird like some mini connectors. So we'll see. Let's go ahead and pop these fans out. So there's four screws on each. So let's go ahead and get them out. And we'll likely reuse these screws we'll see unless the fan comes with also well we can just reuse there usually the fan screws are all the same <sighs> all right so we'll get these out and hopefully it will all fit in nicely there was quite a bit of clearance left in between um, so we'll see hopefully these will fill that extra space and also be able to pull a lot more air in 
Okay, well, I took those four screws out and it's still stuck. So I don't know if the two fans are kind of merged together. Let's go ahead and get the other four screws out. Okay. Wow, I don't think so. How are these fans stuck in here? It's like they're glued on. Okay, let's see what's happening here. Somehow these fans are stuck real good in there. Okay, so what in the world? Oh, why are they stuck so tight? Oh my god. Okay, that rubber, the rubber attached was making it stuck. Okay, so here you can see these fancy, they don't use a standard connection. So that's annoying. All right, we'll set that aside. We got these fans now. So let's go ahead and open it and see what we got. So it comes like this. And pretty much it just has four screws. I'm not going to need those. And we'll take the fan out so it has a little hole that it goes through. And yeah. So these. Oh, I didn't. Okay. The fans, we want them pointing up. Okay. So that way it blows the air up inside. So it's going to pull the air in through the tower and then blow it into to pull that. All right. And let's see here. So this is pulling air in and then let's see because the CPU will pull air like this. Actually, I might want to change up some of the fans. So right now everything is pulling air in, I believe. Um, then the power supply is pulling air and blowing it out here. Interesting. That's weird. So it's blowing the air into this. So it might be better actually to have some pulling the air out. So right now we have this CPU and then we'll have the fan blowing the air into the CPU to help it cool. So that means we'll want these to blow air outwards. That will be better. Okay, so we get better airflow here. And this fan connector is really long. So let's see here. The bottom is this way, and I'm going to have it so it sits this way, so that way when it stands up, when it stands up, we have the fans facing the right way. Okay, let's get in the four screws here. Okay, so we'll grab one first, and we'll get the screw into here. Okay, let's line that up, and get this guy in there. Okay. Hopefully it won't be noisy because this doesn't have the little rubber, rubbery pads on it, right? But uh, we're going to change up the... Oh, it's hitting these cablings here, so I got to try and get it all lined up right. All right. And we'll get this screw in there. Right, so we got those two. Sorry, I know my arm was probably just in the view the whole time, but hopefully you can see what's going on. This guy in there. Okay, and then look at this. Yeah, because if I just have them all pulling air in, right, then basically it's gonna use kind of like a vacuum static pressure and the air is gonna have to go somewhere. So it'll come out all the random holes, but yeah, you kind of want it pulling. Let's see, actually. Uh, because we're going to have the GPU in there, huh? So since the GPU is also going to be pulling air in, we don't want these to fight the GPU, actually. So we should actually pull the air in. Okay, we'll have it all pull the air in. This, the GPU will be the one pulling the air out. So... The GPU will be getting all the nice, fresh airflow. Yeah, because this is right under the GPU, so the GPU will be getting all this airflow. Okay, we'll just leave it the way they had it. That might actually be the best, because it'll get all the fresh air to the fans. Okay? And that's a good thing. All right. Okay. So, I guess we'll just do it the way it was. And 
I wonder because the thing will be here, right? If I turn it, this is the bottom. Yeah, no, we're going to have all this extra fan slack. Well, we'll figure something out with the fan slack. We'll probably have to, like, just wrap it around like this with the rest. So, yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and get these screws in. Sorry, I'm wasting your guys' time. Hopefully, or hopefully you're enjoying watching my struggles and figuring things out because it's all a process of learning and everybody has to learn from somewhere. So, yeah, every tower is different. Every case is different. So you're always going to have something new to figure out. So as you can see, even though I've been doing this for a very long time, there's always something new. You're always seeing and learning something different. Okay. People ask me, how do I know all this stuff? It, you just do it. <laughs> figure it out over time. After you work on so many, you kind of learn how everything works, how things go together. And then you can decide if you want to change things around. All right. Get this guy in there. All right. You don't always have to do it the same way. That's the beauty of building your own computers. You can customize things. But uh, if you want to do it the best way possible, you want all the cool intake blowing into the CPU and into the GPU. That way you get as much cool air as possible. Okay, going into those. So yeah, this bracket, the support is how the cool air goes. Okay, next let's get another fan. We have three of these and again, these should all fit. Okay, so same thing, we got the other fan here. Put this guy out. These, we're not looking to make the fan, the computer as quiet as possible, so we're not worried about all those um, rubber silencer thingies. Okay, in this case, we're looking to get the best performance, and good performance usually comes with more noise, although. If you add the rubber things there are other ones where you have the rubber things but this doesn't come with them um, you could always add those rubber things later if you wanted to try and make it quieter but we'll see usually it's not gonna really be a noise issue so we'll see Okay, got all the fans in. We're almost at the home stretch. Getting all these cables are probably going to be a pain because it's designed for um, the other motherboard, the way they put the layout. But uh, we'll figure something out, okay? So, probably won't need that guy. All right, so we're gonna have to use this splitter thing now. So we'll get this in, okay, and this one in. There we go, all right. So we got both fans connected now. We can go ahead and kind of like tuck and hide this cabling out of the way. All right, if you want, you can hide it even more, wherever it fits, right? Okay, let's see, how are we going to plug this probably to there like that, 
All right, we'll figure out the cable management a bit more later. Got all of this here. Okay, so now we gotta figure out how to get the motherboard in with all this stuff in the way. Okay, and this probably isn't gonna fit properly. We're gonna have to figure something out. I think I have to cut these zip ties here because I don't think I'll be able to move these wires over, but we'll find out. All right, let's go ahead and pull this out of the way. Okay, so next thing we got is the motherboard. And the motherboard, you wanna line this up with this panel, obviously, because there's not really anywhere else you can put it. And we gotta get this cabling out of the way. All right, looks like this kind of tucks down there. I think they were hiding it under there. Okay, let's see, can we get this in safely? Let's slide it in. Oh, it's gonna be tricky, isn't it? Gotta get these out of the way. Okay, we'll slide this in first, like that. Oh, there we go. Careful with the wireless antenna thingies. All these wires are in the way, oh my goodness. Okay, then get this stuff out of the way. That stuff out of the way. This is in. We gotta line up the back panel here with the little hole. Alright, let's see. I'm gonna need some better lighting. Oops, sorry. My head was probably just in the way. Alright, let's take a look here. So we gotta line up these screw mounts down here. Okay. And we got all these wires here kind of in the way. Oops, I think the audio thing is getting trapped under there. Come on. Give me a second. Let me get the cable out. I'll be back. Okay. Had to get this uh, HD audio cable out. We're going to now line this up. Okay. It looks like this needs to be pulled down here. So let's try and get these fan cables out of the way get that in okay so we got that I'm gonna get that screw in and then we're gonna line other stuff up and get the rest in okay put this in here all right it's hard to do this I either need the flashlight or but then I can't record right <laughs> okay we got that in now we need this to get pulled down here. Okay. Oh, my screwdriver. Okay, so this is going to be tough. I might need the little screwdriver extension, but you get the idea. I'm going to get the other four screws in, so let me do that, and I'll be back. All right, so I got that screw in. I got that screw in, I got that screw in, and I got that screw in. Let's go ahead and continue connecting everything else. All right, let's plug this stuff in. So first we have the, uh, let's see, is this gonna even reach? Oh no, eh, maybe. I do need to pull a little more slack here. Okay, and then we can get this guy in. It's gonna be, I don't know, I can't do this with the camera in my way. Let's try this. Okay, I don't know what you guys are looking at because, yeah, nope, that's not gonna work. I don't know what's happening now. We got to plug that in right here. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate this and I'll try and plug that in but there's all these cableies in the way, so I don't know. Okay. Let's 
see here. Actually, let's get the RAM out of the way, and that will give me a tiny bit more room to work here. Hopefully you can see this. The nice thing with this fan that we put, it doesn't cover the RAM at all. Nothing's in the way. And now we can hopefully get this guy in there. All right, nope, I'm gonna have to take you guys out. I need the light. <laughs> Not shadows, I need light. Okay. So, we can get this guy. And... Oh, God. I don't know about this. It's lining up. Okay, there we go. I don't know if you can see, but we got that plugged in. Okay, we're gonna pull this over to the side. Yeah, you guys can't really see much. <laughs> okay, then we'll get this. Oh wow, the CPU fans are gonna have to go all the way back there, the connectors. Okay, get that in. I heard it click, so we should be good. Oh, oops. My bad, we forgot the little four pin one. So give me a second, I'll be back. All right, let's try this again. So I reattached the four on the end there. And again, this is difficult, the lighting with the flash in my face and then making shadows. Okay, that's in, I just need to click it down. Come on, let me do this with two hands, I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. So, we gotta actually get the fan connectors all the way back here. So, well, not all of them, but this one. So, we'll plug this in and then we'll deal with the extra slack. So, we'll plug that into the chassis fan here. And plug that guy in. Okay, so since this one is two, then we also have the 8-pin CPU power, which is going to be a huge pain because it's all the way in that back corner there. I should have plugged it in before getting the motherboard in. Um, you guys won't be able to see anything as I get this in, so I'll put this and I'll be back. All right, so I ended up taking the two screws out to move this out of the way, and then I took the screws out from the motherboard and lifted it slightly just enough to get that in so we got that and let me put this back and then yeah i'll see you guys in a bit all right so i got the ram back in i routed the fan connector here the splitter behind so now we just need to plug these in let's flip this around okay got this one which one's which we got that guy and this guy okay one in there and then we'll plug this one in here as well okay then we just gotta put these well let's actually get this in first so this one okay it looks like hopefully this will still reach because this is supposed to go all the way over there nope that I don't think that's gonna reach is it I need to pull some slack out there we go okay so now we should be able to get this over there I need better lighting. <laughs> it's like a choice between trying to show you guys the full view and trying to get enough lighting to see what I'm doing. Okay, so this guy, we just gotta rotate it and get the USB-C thingies lined up. I can't see what I'm doing here. I don't know if you guys can even see what I'm doing here. But basically, there's the two USB-C thingies there. We need to make sure these are out of the way. And we gotta plug this onto those, okay? Let me actually do that and I'll be back because I need the lighting and I won't be able to record a good view. All right, I got that cable in there. We're good. Now we gotta get this, the USB 3.0 ports cable in there. And I think we got everything plugged in. Will this go in properly there we go line that up okay line that up sorry and push that in there we go so we got that all in there okay and yeah let's 
go get the side panel. All right, let's fix up the cables a little bit here. So we got this one, the two fans. We're gonna line that up down here. Got this going down here, okay. We can kind of hide these a little bit there. And then we'll kind of fold this and tuck this under here so it can hide as well. Okay, there we go. Now we need the GPU. Oh, we don't want to shove that down too far. Okay, so we got those kind of all tucked in out of the way. Now we got this guy here. So, oh, I forgot. We need to figure out where did this... Let me figure out where the HD audio connector is. I'll be back. All right, so the motherboard came with this to make it easier to plug in um, the power LED, HD, power switch, all that stuff, right? Um, but we don't need that. We already have it all plugged in. So we'll set that one aside. That's the one that was wrapped in the bubble wrap. Um, the HD um, audio thing, I completely forgot. Uh, this doesn't use that because it has that um, extra little, whatchamacallit thing, uh, this triangle box. All right, so you plug that in, and then you can see this has the audio jacks and everything here, and then it has a USB-C. Um, I think this is the input, actually. So, yeah, all right, we got to peel this guy off. Um, we also have the wireless antenna here. Um, there's another little connector. This is for another M.2, I guess maybe if you lose or break that thing. All right, so we'll peel this open. We got the wireless antenna. Let's take that out. Okay, so new wireless antenna. Take this guy out here. All right, there's the wireless antenna. Put that there. All right. I'm gonna have to make sure all the stuff works because obviously since this is all new hardware, the customer is gonna have to update a bunch of stuff. Um, all right, and then this is, this looks like for the USB 2. So these USB 2 things, I guess you can, what, why does it, how does it do that? It splits it into two more. Interesting. So you can plug that into one of these and then it looks like you get two more. But anyways, we don't need that one either, but we do need this USB-C, USB cable. I don't know if this is a normal USB 3.0 to USB-C cable because I don't know how it's possible that it would add all of this like a USB-C and a USB all through a USB-C port so I think this one is special because on the back it says there's a specific place that you plug this one so this plugs in here you can see it has this shape here so you can only plug it in one way yep so this is a special cable definitely and this cable is not going to be used, so we need to just hide this back here somewhere. Okay, so we'll just put that back there, because now that's not going to be used, and we don't want it blocking the um, GPU port. And uh, this one, I think it's this. So you have this Super Speed 10. Let's double check. It tells you to plug it into a specific one. It's one of these. I think it's that, because you see how it has that little shape here. But let me double check to make sure. All right, I'm back, and I was right. It's the one right down here next to the Wi-Fi antenna holes. All right, anyways, let's plug in the GPU, and then we'll get this thing started up. All right. And I hope there's going to be no issues once we get this thing running, because this was so much work to get together. All right, let's zoom back in. All right, we got this. We're going to have to get that in first. So line that up. Okay. And then we'll push this down. Push that down, okay, good. Make sure this goes up to lock it into place. Okay, this goes in basically just a regular like PCIe socket. All right, now for the GPU. Uh, let me actually dust this real quick. All right, we got this all cleaned up, dusted off. Let's go ahead now and get this into place. So this is gonna go in here. Obviously we need the power connection here as well okay so let's go ahead and plug this guy in because it'll probably be easier to plug this in first come on come on line it up jeez it's so 
difficult to get. There we go. Okay, make sure that clicks in all the way. Then we're going to lower this down here. Okay, the tricky part is we got to get this portion in the back. Let me zoom out all the way. Okay, get that in. Serious. Get this out. This thing needs under here. Stay out of the way. Okay. Let's keep that out. Get this in. Okay. Then lock this guy up. Make sure it's not smushing any cables here. Okay. There we go. Then we'll line this guy up. And then we'll push this into place. Make sure this latch, the white latch is out of the way. Okay, push that on. Perfect. Latch this white piece back in. Good. And now we got to get these screws back on. So, if you remember, we had these screws here. I think they went through from this side. But uh, let's go ahead and do this first because probably easier so we'll get this screw in Oreo hold on almost done get this in okay. I can't see let me do this and I'll be back all right so I had to like hold this up because this was kind of drooping down and then now we can get these all in okay probably have to we'll see i might have to loosen these to get the these other screws from the other side in but let's see okay so we go here we gotta get these screws back oh actually i don't okay perfect and the last screw here okay perfect so there we go we got the gpu in everything is in and now we just need the last final touch which is the side panel which i don't know if the bigger fan will fit it probably won't let's see here so we're gonna go ahead and first try with this where's the back portion here this slides in here and goes like that okay so if I look at this, how much room do we have here? Yeah, I don't think there's enough room for a, a thicker fan on this one. So we will probably have to stick with that. But let's try it and just see if I can even put the panel on top. We're likely going to have to return this one fan. Okay, so get this guy. I'm pretty sure that's going to be too tall, right? Yeah, that's too tall. So we'll have to keep this mini fan and use that. So let me do that and I'll be back. Okay, so this small fan had this little adapter thingy. So let's reattach this, reroute all the wiring, and then we should be good to go. So let's see here. in here but there we go all right we got that in now let's figure out where should we route this we could technically just route it over here right this thing's pretty big and clunky that thing that they added all right so we got that and this will go this way so we just gotta line this up and reconnect this cable here all right click that in good and let's see 
while the wire get in the way we need to make sure it's not going into anything so we'll route it around here okay and let's get this back on all right line that up good looks good tighten this back in oops sorry tighten these screws in looks good all right did they put this fan backwards no that's the right way okay all right so this will blow air down into the cpu the cpu will blow the air out this way then you got these other fans blowing air in and then hopefully all the other stuff will exhaust out so there we go we got this all reassembled the only thing is now we have these lighter colored fans here they're much thicker so they'll get a lot more airflow you can see there's plenty of room even between these fans still so we should be good all right i'm gonna plug this baby in and hopefully all that work paid off all right i'll be back all right moment of truth it's powering on i hear the fan starting up I need to change this over to hdmi Fans are noisy. I hope that's just because it's starting up. Because they're spinning pretty fast. Things are lighting up. Okay, still nothing. Okay, it stopped itself. Oh yeah, they're quiet now. You hear that? And it's starting up. Oh, turn off flash. Here you go, CPU installed, all right. Uh, blah 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 structure change Y to reset uh, I don't think they have BitLocker so let's press Y to reset them we got this you can see this thing cycling through some colors I'm not sure what that I think that's the change like the overclock speed interesting okay so there we go it's starting up again See if it boots right away. Okay, please enter setup to recover BIOS setting. New CPU installed. Please enter setup to configure your system. When RAID was built, ensure blah, blah, blah. Okay, F1. You can see there's only one boot drive there. So we should be okay. All right, you can see CPU fan. All right, how fast it's spinning. Chassis fan, AIO pump spinning. And I think we should be good. The chipset fans, I guess, aren't spinning or it doesn't show. Those are the little connectors. I can't change those ones. That's what came with the motherboard. So we should be good. So let's just save. Okay, no changes made. And let's see. Let's boot, please. Come on, boot, please. You can hear the startup. The fans are somewhat noisy. And then once it's actually booting, they go quiet. So let's see. Come on. Finish your BIOS saving settings and start up, please. You can see the cycling. Oh, it went quiet. That's how we know it's starting. Yep. Come on, start spinning the little windows thing. What just happened? Come on, boot, please. Don't scare me. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, oh, it's starting. Okay. Come on. Spin the little thing. There we go. Windows is starting up, and we should be good to go. They don't have a password, so I can't show the screen, um, but I'll see if it's starting up. Uh, it's still spinning right now. Okay. So the only thing is these cables are long. You can't really do anything to hide them. But this is the wireless, and then you have the thing. Oh, okay, it's doing getting devices ready, so it's installing stuff. But uh, yeah, and then you have this USB cable here that's sticking out for this. Oh, the magnet on here is pretty strong. So you have these. There's the BIOS flashback button. Um, I think this is like overclocking. It has the volume. This is a button, so you can mute it, I think, by clicking. And you can change the volume with this. And then I don't know what the flex key need to look up that stuff it's all in the manual so I'll look it up then you got a that looks like a regular USB port like USB 2 oh this is the flashback it's kind of interesting because this is the um, USB uh, BIOS flash thing 
flashback and then you have a USB-C port here so somehow they use the USB 3 to convert it into a USB-C and then you get the audio and all this other stuff pretty cool all right and it's booting up again so we'll just stick that there the customer can decide what they want to do with it later and it's starting up so we should be good that's pretty much it hopefully this video helped you guys out I don't know if it helped you guys <laughs> this was more of a installation just to show what I'm doing not a tutorial but anyways thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one bye